This is SIBN Radio. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube at Select USA TV. This is SIBN Radio. I want to welcome you to another edition of the Coach's Corner. My name is Marcus Select, aka the Coach. And yes, I have issues too. Life coaches have issues. So don't get it twisted. But welcome to our For More of a Life campaign for or towards change, day four. And I hate that I don't have a title in uh, uh, the description for you, but you're going to have to pay close attention because these these uh, For More of a Life campaigns um, are very, very good. They're very, very helpful to download and listen to later. And so I want to welcome you, those of you watching us, listening to us rather, and watching on Ustream or YouTube, listening also on VoiceCast. Thank you so much on iBroadcast TV for those of you that are listening. Facebook, thank you so much. Twitter, thank you. Spreaker, thank you. And of course, thank you to all of my iTunes fans that are listening uh, through the subscriptions there on iTunes. And for those that are listening to our block programming on SIBN Television, this is the Coach's Corner. Welcome aboard. And I also want to welcome my new listeners on Blog Talk Radio Network. Thank you so very much, all of you from the different platforms from around the world for joining us right here on the Coach's Corner. As again, I have said to you that the For More For Life campaign titles uh, do not have a description. So as you listen to one, then that gives you a clue that you may want to listen, listen to them consecutively. Uh, so that you or download them so you'll have them later on. I am so proud that you have stopped by. It indicates to you subconsciously sending consciously sending a print, a print to your subconscious mind that you will not live life like you did last year, last quarter, last month, last week yesterday every day is a new day you're striving forward and yes remember as i always say that and a lot of people say well marcus where do you get your information let me just say this somebody said well where do you get your information well i was a juvie i was a juvie kid uh even though i had two parents i had a well-to-do father that i found that out later um and and all of that i was still a juvie kid because i grew up in a very tense and racial district for one number two i was my parents got married very young and there are a lot of things that they learned along the way i'll leave that at that and then third of all i was hard-headed uh, i was scared uh and i did a lot of running away from home and and when you run away from home, you got to survive. So we're still in big wheels and bicycles. And then later it grew into other things. So uh, I was a juvie kid. I, I let that cat out of the box. And I had psychologists and therapists and uh, ministers, of course, uh, 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 school social workers, uh, um, you know, moderators from uh, juvenile court. Uh, all of those, uh, I had, I had, I had a lot of help. Trust me when I tell you, I had a lot of help, a lot of help. Uh, and then I also grew up in a time where, where self-education, uh, was, was, was relished and it was taught. And and even though you made mistakes in your life, you were encouraged to read. You were encouraged to sit still and be quiet. You were encouraged to to watch the company that you keep and you were encouraged to respect uh, uh, the process, even though you might have violated principles within the process. So I was a juvie kid. I let it out of the bag. Now, you know a little bit about something. This is when I when you hear me talking and sharing and, and disseminating information, these are not coming from books I've read. That needs to be very clear. These thoughts are coming from years of having processed pain through the skill level that I was taught as a child and as a, a teenager. And also the, the skills that I have acquired through wisdom and experience and, of course, writing and and, and, and meditating, but also through my young adult life. I have always been this way. 
I didn't start uh, this last year, last decade. I have always been this way. I remember when I was in high school, uh, there was a lady that used to make dresses. Um, I was in my last year of high school, and I met this lady. She used to make uh, wedding dresses, and she was really good. I mean, she was so good. It was just she was second. I'd never seen anybody even make a wedding dress. I just seen a wedding dress in a wedding, and that's it. And this lady used to make these wedding dresses, and in her apartment, she had these wedding dresses on uh, the mannequins all around. And I used to ask her, "What are you doing with these wedding dresses?" And she says, "I'm selling them." Uh, and, and, and and no, she says, I'm going to sell them, but right now I'm making them and I don't know how to do this or that, but one day, and I said to her, I was a 12th grader. I said, why does it have to be one day? Why can't it be now? She says, what do you mean? And I began to share with her some small business ideas that I acquired because I was a self starter. I was this way at eight eight years old I had a business now, now now mind you having a business concept mindset is different than having owned businesses there's a big difference all right I don't want to get wrong word get out there that I owned businesses no I had a great business concept conditioned mind from an early age eight years old I had a library my, my parents lived in a parsonage on church property and we had books a glore <laughs> and I remember you know uh, having a business with that and not charge people for being late with their books that's before I had ever visited I believe a library or either I visited a library once and I said this is a great idea but I can tell you more about the story it's kind of funny too but anyway getting back to the lady that had the wedding dresses um, so I so she said well will you the long story short she said will you come by and consult me and I'll pay you now mind you this lady was on public assistance that's what they called it back then they didn't call it I don't remember hearing it called being called welfare or maybe she was on welfare and now they're calling it public assistance and uh, it was in the hood it was in the hood that used it was in an area that used to be a very very wealth well to do wealthy area uh, that had just been run down houses that just people didn't have the budgets to, to maintain these beautiful uh, semi mansions uh, uh, in the neighborhood and she lived in apartments across from a lot of these beautiful homes but long story short I began to consult her and she paid me well a few years later she opened up her own store on Lakeshore Drive. Now, Lakeshore Drive had a very significant, uh, it was very significant to me because I loved living on the lake. I live, uh, uh, my residence is off the lake now. I love living uh, off the lake, not the ocean, but the lake. And uh, and so when I knew this, when I heard that she opened a business on Lakeshore Drive, I was like, man, that it impressed me all the way because anything near the water is just the, the, the atmosphere is different when you're walking, when you're running. And so I was very proud. I was very proud. Now, that doesn't mean she reached in the cash register and gave me money for gas. That's just the way folks see is that gratefulness has a stopping point for a lot of folks. People are not as loyal and grateful for things as they used to be 30 years ago. And that's what I want you to work on. I want you to work on your gratefulness this holiday season. That's not my point today, but I want to drop that on you because I want to encourage you to send another print from your conscious mind to your subconscious mind that you are all that and a bag of chips by practicing gratefulness. That if I've said something and if I've, if I've given you a point or two that have helped you, that you have put into practice and saw it work, then I need to hear from you. And that is not, that is not, uh, I'm not shy in asking you to communicate with me because this should be a two way street. But I'm very proud that you have stopped by and you have listened and you are telling your friends, I know of a guy, he was a juvie. <laughs> you know, you can tell them that now if you want to. Uh, but I did a lot of reading on uh, my parents. Uh, my father used to say, you know, hey, uh, you know, you're, you're a young man, you, you need to read. And so one of the, my favorite books was the dictionary. And I used to study the power of words. And, I, and my second favorite book as I grew older was the thesaurus because I love words that described words. 
Uh, and then my third favorite book as as I grew up was a magazine called Foreign Policy. I always and, and the Reader's Digest, of course, uh, that was one of my favorite easy reads. And Foreign Policy was my hard read because I always had to look up a word in my favorite book, the dictionary, to understand how the uh, the text in the the magazine Foreign Policy, uh, uh, you know, was flowing. Um, so foreign policy was my first serious, uh, other than the Bible, of course, foreign policy was my first serious read that challenged my mind. And then I also read a lot of my mother's college books. You had a lot of books. So I, I said all of this so that you so you'll be comfortable in knowing that I am not disseminating information to you that I picked up from some motivational speaker, even though I do occasionally listen to motivational speakers. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I do occasionally listen to very serious reads. Um, uh, and, and maybe I'll have a suggested list at some point. Um, I remember reading a book, Who Moved My Cheese? Uh, but one, most times when I read a book, I, I, I can I can celebrate. I celebrate when I read a book differently because I'm, I'm reading some of my own thoughts and I can't believe it. And so that's one of the reasons why I'm working on uh, uh, being an author. And I've published some stuff, but, uh, you know, that was when self-publishing was not as popular as it is now and i could use some people on my team uh editing wise and getting the materials together is very easily but it's the editing that's that's the issue so i just wanted you to know a little bit about me because in your for more for life campaign uh towards uh, or having a deposit toward change for this next 30 days or so or so uh i want you to know who you're dealing with i can guarantee change I can guarantee that if you show up and you listen to the Coach's Corner, Coach's Corner for six months, you won't be the same. I can guarantee it. I've done it over and over and over and over and over. So uh, it's just a natural inclination and a natural talent. Today we want to talk about for day four, what will make your personal campaign in life successful? What would make your for more for life for change successful? As I said on day three, it is not often that the change that we acquire is the change we expected. That's why it's not it's not good to quickly boast about change until change has settled. It's like having an investment that you just opened up and the market. You haven't been uh, tested in market fluidity yet. You, you you're just boasting about how you have the ability to invest uh, uh, X, Y, and Z, but you haven't been market, your investment hasn't been market tested yet, and you as an investor haven't been market tested yet. Now, I'm not an investor, okay? Uh, but I have a great understanding, at least, of the peripherals of the issues. Uh, and I'm assuming, I'm assuming that if you're going to invest, if you're going to invest, you have to be able to weather storms. If you're going to change, you have to be able to weather storms because some, because some changes may not come out exactly like you planned. And I use the example of falling in love for an example. I use I used that falling in love, you know, and, and even if everything is right, let me just say this is a freebie, as everything is, if everything is right in your falling in love, you're falling in love plan. You're still going to be tested. That's one of the principles of life. Anything that's authentic must go through continued periodic testing. Because a better word would be pruning because that's how it grows. Well, I met him and I met her and everything is just really flowing. Okay. We're going to get married, and, and, and later on, we got married, and everything is beautiful. Okay. I'm still waiting as, you know, as a coach, I'm still listening for that last. We went through some tests, and and we're, we're better. That's what I'm looking for. We went through X, Y, and Z. I'm not talking about unnecessary created storms now. So what makes a good for more for life campaign? I got five minutes. Oh, boy. <laughs> Attitude, maintaining integrity and assessing the management of yourself, of your of your soul, of your body. And most of us are just not integral about maintaining ourselves. 
you got a good attitude on the outside, but internally your attitude is suspect. You're able to cover. You're slick. You're fast. You're fast on your feet, fast with your mouth, and it appears that you are pleasant. But as I've often said, when it comes to conflict resolution, you break down because you ha or have not been integral. I have not been integral in the process of managing myself. And it's something that we have to master. We have to master management of self because from self we emanate to the world. What we want, when we want it, how we want it. If you lie to yourself enough times, then you, you begin to send those prints to your subconscious mind. And then when you decide that you want to do the things that are now right and integral, you still have now a database in your subconscious mind that you have not erased. Attitude is not that which you display to me and my friends and your associates that and impress those individuals that you are okay and positive and you are really you really got it going on. No, attitude is maintaining the integrity of assessment of that which you see in the mirror as well as that which you can't see in the mirror. Purpose. What makes your For More For Life campaign more powerful is that you're researching and mastering your earthly intent for living. I said purpose for your more For More For Life campaign is central for your for more for life campaign for change as you research and learn to master your earthly intent for living and then begin to live on purpose now you when you've been through hell and high water you can come up with a statement like that one right there because that's a bad statement your campaign for more for life for change uh uh has to have vision for it to be successful where you're patiently seeing the bigger picture that requires new steps of discipline and new steps of balance. And part of the reason why change is impeded is because we always brag about previous change. We brag about previous change. Men are best at that because we brag about previous accomplishments because men tend to be more accomplished based and women tend to be more relational based. Vision. Are you seeing the bigger picture? Most people cannot. Don't fool yourself. Part of seeing the bigger picture is being objective. And I may have to finish these over the weekend. Part of the seeing the bigger picture is being objective. And most people are not objective. That's not a bad thing. It can work for your advantage, but you gotta be you gotta learn how to be objective at the as the end result. Most people are not. Objective means I can take a look on, at another side of this and not be uh, uh, and not consider myself out of the game. Part of the game, I always say, play the game of life. Know the game. Know the game of life. Play it and play it well. Don't play games in life. Play the game of life. I got to get ready to get out of here. Goals. Consistently outlining your steps that you need to create a new reality with flexibility. Always remember, with flexibility, you got kids now. With flexibility, you only have one car now. With flexibility, you had just lost your job. There's nothing wrong with being flexible. Focus. Using a bull's eye mindset to aim at critical targets that hinder your progress. Focus. What is hindering your or what could hinder your campaign for more for life for change? And I've got several of them. So what I've tried to do is I've tried to deep dig into my subconscious mind and bring up the pictures that I just sent. And keep them in the forefront, the four lobes, if I'm saying that correctly, in, in of my brain and to meditate and to rehearse those pictures so that I can create a new me and minimize the habits that I have in, 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 incurred as a result of my pain and the lack of management of that pain. I need to be real right there. Focus, man. I could go, man. I could, man, listen. <laughs> If you ain't told your friends to tune into this program, I don't know. I, you know, I don't know what to tell you because you're missing out on some free stuff. Some free stuff. You mean you, we need some money now, but we need some support now. But this, we're gonna do this whether you help us or not. We're gonna attract to us people who want to help us, whether you do it or not. Why not get on board? Why not comment? Why not leave? A, why not encourage our staff? 
you know. So I I, I got to get ready to get out of here. I mean, my time is gone, man. I, you know, but I wanted to give you a little bit about myself. So today, I mean, this, as we progress, as you as you hear about day five, we're going to continue on with day five with the the twelve things that will make the For More for Life campaign a success. I'm proud of you. I don't care what your accomplishments are. We all have a set of accomplishments. I'm still proud of you. I'm proud of you that you are uh, living your life on purpose. I'm proud that you are uh, being kind during this holiday season. I'm proud uh, that you are reaching back and pulling up someone who wants it bad enough uh, to push them to the forefront of their potential and hopefully allow them the space to discover their purpose. Man, this is the coach, and I love this. I love this. Is, this is the best job in the whole world. And you know what that job is? It is to cheer you on to the finish line. That's what I do. That's why they call me the coach. And you got a lot of coaches out there, but you'll ne never find a coach like this one. My name is Marcus Salette. I'll see you on day five. Listening to SIPN Radio on the Select USA TV I Broadcasting Network. You're listening to SIBN Radio.